Hello there. Today's video, we're going to take these parts here and build an external power supply for the Atari 520 ST. Not an STF, not a 1040 STF, not an STE, but the external style one. Let's get to it. All right, so the 520ST, I think that the 260ST as well that you might find in Europe, I don't think we had any of those in the US, but the original short case Atari ST like this guy doesn't have an internal power supply to it. It has a nice little port here on the back for power. Or you plug in one of these. And I have this external power supply. I've recapped it. It's in, it's in fine shape. But the, one of the things I don't like about it is these cords. Storage is a little more difficult with this guy. Obviously, I can wrap these things up, but I thought, you know what? Why don't I try to build my own? And what we're going to do here is we're going to make this kind of modular so that we can plug in a regular kettle, port, kettle plug into here. We have a detachable power cord. This is actually a MIDI cord here that's uh, male to female. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, well, using a beam mill power supply and various different other wires and bits. It's not that much. Uh, 3D printed case here, and we'll get that going. All right, let's go over each of the different parts that components that we're using here. I kind of touched on it briefly, but in a little more detail. What we have here is we have a Meanwell RT50B power supply. It has plus 5 volts, plus 12 volts, and minus 12 volts. And this is necessary for the, the 520ST. The internal power supplies that you'll find in the 1040 STFs, 520 STFs, STs, etc. They only need the plus 12 volts and plus 5 volts. Uh, there's a voltage regulator in the five or the, the STFs that will generate the minus 12 volts needed for the RS232 port. All right, we also have a, a nice little 3D printed case. I'll post this on Thingiverse if I haven't already. This is something that, that I designed. Uh, I have a similar one that I've put together for Amigas as well for an external power supply for them. This is the location for our lovely little port, plug port and switch combo package. We have this opening here for our lovely little plug DIN connector. And then we have our cable. Now the Atari ST uh, has only seven lines and we have eight here we can just remove this middle one we don't really need anything from that on this side because it's actually a male on the atari versus a female here on the connector and then wires for connecting this to the meanwhile power supply so let's get to it so what we have here this is the connector we have it to define what goes where what we have is we have these top two on the left hand side just kind of rotating around. These, these top two here are plus five volts, followed by plus 12 volts. This bottom one is not connected. The middle one is not connected because that's not even a, available in the Atari ST. This next one on the bottom here is a minus 12 volts, and these last two up here are ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to connect these two and these two, so I only have to connect one wire to each one of those and then those other two wires, and then we're good to go. So we'll have four wires coming out of this specifically. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm just gonna remove the two pins. This keeps it from have, causing it. Next, I'm just gonna kinda of just pinch these two closer together, and then we'll just solder those two together. Strip these wires.
pinning the wires. Tending the wires. Wiring up the terminal connections. Connecting the ground line. Connecting plus 5 volts. Connecting plus 12 volts. Connecting minus 12 volts. Heat shrinking it all. Adding the holes. Assembling in place. volts ground voltage 2 plus 12 volts voltage 3 minus 12 volts Tightening up the wires with the zip tie. Connecting the switch and plug. Yellow is ground in this case. Red is neutral. Blue is live. Tidying up these lines as well. Thing I'll hit the first time. Be careful. Looking good. I know it's unloaded, but we're still going to test it just as a starting point, making sure we're in the ballpark. Five volts. 
negative 12, positive 12. Lastly, this connector is too chunky to plug into the Atari ST. So we're just going to trim it down. Make sure this fits. Top is here. Need to take some more off. Let's try it again. Solid. Good plug to go. into the computer. The computer's plugged into a monitor. Let's turn the monitor on. We will plug the cord into the socket on the PS, the new PSU. There we go. Plug the kettle plug in. Flip the switch on the PSU. Flip the switch on the Atari. And it looks like we're good. We're good to go. PSU is working. Power off. Last step. Seal it up. Wipe off that excess super glue. Let it cure. All right, power supply is good, it's completed, it's tested, and I can play Little Ultima now. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, this is a not too hard of a project to actually do, so if you need one of these PSUs, you can do it for relatively inexpensively and relatively easily. Minimal soldering, uh, total parts and, and cost you know, at the moment, 35, 40 US dollars approximately. It's not that much of a savings versus buying one yourself, buying from some third party that actually builds them too. But you know what? There's something fun about building it yourself. All right, have a fantastic day. Thanks.